everybody welcome back to the channel this is a wrap-up of everything I read in June now if you're thinking hang on a minute what happened to everything you read read in May I didn't do it because it was mostly ebooks and I couldn't be bothered to edit it together and put the pictures in so no um, so I am going to do excuse me uh, my wrap-up for June um, I'm just getting my phone ready to show you the picture of oh, this phone the various books that I actually read that were ebooks or in one case an audio book I'll be right back in a second because I'm not actually ready I'm an idiot hi everybody welcome back to the channel if you've been here before thank you for coming back um, I appreciate it if you're a subscriber thank you and if you're not why not if you're coming back and if you're new thank you for joining me um, I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll enjoy my reading wrap up for the month of June now if you're wondering what happened to May because I didn't do it I didn't do it I read so many ebooks that I just could not be bothered to edit the video together and put the little pictures in because I'm lazy and it takes a long time so I'm sorry um, if you're interested in me doing wrap ups let me know and I will tell you what I think of the various books and I'll continue with them I know some people like them but some people think what's this about um, so the first book I read in June was Icon Volume 2. Now I read Icon Volume 1 in May, it's absolutely brilliant. So basically this two a volume book uh, asks the question, what killed Marilyn Monroe? So obviously over the years there's been lots of conspiracy theories, murder theories, everything from uh, the first the Kennedys to being a Russian spy to knowing about aliens in Roswell. Um, they get more and more outlandish every year. So Gary Vitico Rublis um, deconstructs all the information and really takes down all the liars that have come out over the years from Robert Slatzer to Frank, Fred, Frank Capel, Jack Clemens, Lionel Granson and so on. Um, it is definitely worth reading. If you want to know more about this book have a look at the haul where I go into what's in depth in this chapters but there's so much in here. I came out of here knowing more about Marilyn's mental health than I ever thought I needed to do. It made me very sad. She deserved so much better and her life and death is far more interesting than having anything to do with the Kennedys. The next thing I did was I listened to an audiobook and I've only got a tiny picture of it here because it won't expand it for some reason and you can't even see it. But it's called Santa Grint. It's by Jodie Taylor. Um, it is the first short story based upon the t from the Time Police series. Usually it's Chronicles of St Mary's. Um, but this is the Time Police and in this story um, Commander Hay directs her team to do an open day over Christmas, a Christmas party for a local orphanage um, with uh, Lieutenant Grint having to run certain parts of it and arrange it with Jane. Um, during this Christmas party he meets a young, a young boy whose mother has abandoned him in an orphanage as far as he's concerned. I can't think of his name. Let's say the boy's name. No, it doesn't. Um, so uh, the young boy has um, a bad leg, which needs an operation, and his mum's going to come and get him so they can have the operation. But it appears like she's abandoned him. So Grint, being the soft-hearted idiot that he is, that we don't see in the main time police books, decides to... Um, go off and find his mother or to take him from the orphanage to take him to his mother and and so on but they discover a bubble universe so this is a universe within the universe where everything happens the same but you can't escape a bubble universe unless you've got a pod and they don't have a pod uh it's a lovely little story i listened to it on audiobook read by the lovely zara ram who is the best reader of jodie taylor's book she's absolutely fantastic and i gave that one four stars for those who are interested, Icon obviously got five. Then I read this book, Just a Boy from Bristol by um, Michael Kelly. Um, I bought this for my dad for Christmas because I thought he might enjoy it because obviously he was just a boy from Bristol, three years younger than uh, Michael. Um, he obviously, my dad was born in 1940, this book starts in 1940, but my dad doesn't recognise anything that happens in here as being relevant to to what he experienced. And it goes, I guess, it goes to show that everybody's experience is different to me, and I couldn't relate to this this either. Not because it's not written; it's just that it's very all over the place. Some of it is very interesting um, about uh, going in the bomb shelter at Clifton Rocks and stuff like that. That's really good. Um, 
but I, I gave it one star because I just couldn't, I just couldn't get on with it. I'm not talking about to dad. Uh, then I read another, I read an ebook. It's called The Wrong Shoes. It's one of the Hodge and Turner series. Sorry, Hodge and Turner? No, Meredith and Hodge series. And in this one, a policeman is murdered. Um, Joe Adler, one of the cops, is kidnapped. And uh, an ensuing cleaning lady admits to both killing the police officer and killing, uh, not killing, but to kidnapping Joe Adler and keeping her somewhere safe. The reason being is that she believes her sister was murdered, though her sister's death was ruled a suicide. She's convinced it was murder because of the way her sister was dressed. So our team, Meredith and Hodge, go in to look and find out what happened. Again, I gave it four stars. They are really good books. They, they're just really good. Police procedural, you can't go wrong. Same Bristol. One of my favourite places, obviously. Um, yes. The next one I read was Elizabeth Peters, The Curse of the Pharaoh. So in this book, um, this is actually quite funny because a colleague of um, the Peab well, Peabody and whatever her husband's name is, I can't remember him, Emerson something, is murdered or dies out in Cairo. His name is Sir Henry Baskerville and uh, Elizabeth who made point saying it's, it's the Norfolk Baskervilles, not the Devon Baskervilles. And anybody who knows literature will know that the Devon Baskervilles are the Baskervilles from the Arthur Conan Doyle novel, The Hound of the Baskervilles and Sherlock Holmes. So it's a little, little link there. I, I like things like that. So yeah, so in, they're in Luxor, sorry, it's the Valley of the Kings, not Cairo. So Amelia and Emerson go out to carry on the dig into this tomb because Henry had discovered a tomb that had not been discovered. That makes sense because it was an undiscovered tomb and he discovered it. But an enterprising journalist is creating the story of a curse of the pharaohs and they are going around looking at it. Um, people are dying life right and centre, there are attempted murders, but who is the killer? Who killed Sir Henry Baskerville? Well you have to read the book to find out. I loved it and I gave it four stars. No, four stars. Yeah, no, four stars. Most books are four stars at the moment. I don't know why. Next book was Hearts of Hearts of Ice and Stone. You would have seen this one in my haul. This is by Martin Dukes. He's on TikTok if you want to go check him out. Um, this is the story of Laura. She is a girl who lives in Britannia at a time where it's not really says whether it's past or future, it's sort of like a parallel universe type thing, where when people die, they have a chance to come back, they have a chance to live again, they, they will naturally resurrect at some point, but not everybody. So only the wealthy can afford to preserve their loved ones in the cool catacombs of abbeys and hills and spaces. So the poor aren't very happy because they don't get to protect their loved ones and give them a chance to come back. So they just moulder and, and rot away as normal bodies do. Laura discovers she has the ability to tell who can come back and who won't. So she tells who has a heart of ice, those who can come back, and those who are stone, those who can't. She can tell this um, generally by touching them. Um, however, she can also resurrect them before they would naturally resurrect themselves by touching them by reaching into them and pulling putting her life force into their heart which is not good for her so she's doing this and there's a, a team of people who want her to do it for them to bring back an old king um sort of like an arthurian type king that will come back when england needs him most that sort of king um however he has a heart of, eye of stone i believe and then there's another faction who wanted to bring back the previous queen to depose her son, the current king, because he's not very good. Um, and it all takes a, a big toll on poor Laura. I thought it was excellent. It was a four star read and I really enjoyed it. It took a bit to get going, but I think it needed to, to get the backstory there about what this is about. Um, and I would imagine that if Laura can tell the difference between Hearts of Ice and Stone, that at some point somebody else will be able to too who knows but yes it was very very good after that i read oops sorry 
Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, the book that became Blade Runner. I have to admit, I always wondered why it was called that, and now I understand because I've read it. Um, so, uh, yeah, Rick Deckard sorts runaway androids that are his prey. He dreams of owning a live animal, which is the ultimate status symbol because the earth has been devastated by war. Uh, Rick gets a big assignment to retire a six Nexus androids, six targets for a big reward, but it's not that easy. I love this book. I'm not a big sci-fi person. I'm really not a big sci-fi person. But this was a five-star read. Go and read this book. This one will be retained in the permanent collection for a reread another time. I absolutely loved it. I, oh, it was brilliant. I read it in one night. It was that good. I mean, it's not huge, but it was so good. I couldn't put it down. So I really, really loved this book. So I would advise that you pick up a copy. Then I read a snapshot of Murder, as you can see, this was got a 50p label on it. This is from my local charity shop, not the one I normally get my books in, which is 25p. Um, so this is the story of Kate Shackleton, who is a bit of a private, a bit of a sleuth in her part time. But she's taken a break from sleuthing um, to indulge in her other passion photography, so like myself. Um, her local photographic society uh, proposes an outing and they decide to visit Horth. Um, because it's at the time when Horth um, Parsonage became the tour tourist attraction, the museum uh, for the Brontes. So they go there for the opening and during that opening one of their company dies. Not a very nice person. Um, lots of people had a reason to murder this, this Tobias. Um, but is it one of them or is it somebody else that he knows from the area of Horth and Stanbury? And again, this was a four star read. It was so, so good. Absolutely adored it. Then we have Judy Taylor, The Good, the Bad and the History. Um, this book by Jodie Taylor is absolutely brilliant. It's the 14th instalment in the Chronicles of Mary's and Basically, Max goes back to Insight to try and get enough evidence to bring them down. Um, basically, that's it, really. That's the main plot. Um, in this book, Jodie Taylor ties up a lot of loose ends from previous uh, instalments. Uh, and then you're in the last chapter and you, you read it and you're thinking, oh my God, this is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last one. And then you get to the end and it says, what does it say? not the end so we know it's not the end and in fact they had Jodie Con recently and we know what the last book in the Chronicles of St Mary's is going to be called and it completely makes sense and it will be called an honour and a privilege which is what they do what they say when somebody leaves or dies puts them up on the board um, so we believe that's going to be the name of the last instalment but as she says it's not the end but it does wrap up a lot of stories in this one um, so that maybe leaves it open to some new horizons for Max and her uh, her uh, colleagues at St Mary's with some new younger people coming in I'm looking forward to seeing what's next obviously there's more time police I've only read one and a half of those so far I've got another well one and then there's another one out this year and another one out next year that we know of it's never ending with Jodie Taylor how she does it I do not know but she puts out book books that are rated knots uh, I've never known anything like it except for Terry Pratchett in the mid 90s when he put out four books in one year it's mad I reread Marilyn Monroe Private and Disclosed by my friend Michelle Morgan I'm rereading -re currently all my Marilyn books one at a time it's gonna take me years because there's so many of them um, and reviewing them on my Marilyn TikTok channel which is Marilyn and me um, also on my Andrea Life one as well. Um, so this is a... It's been called the best single volume biography on her life. And the reason being is we have Gary Vitico Rubel's icon, The Lifetimes and Films of Marilyn Monroe, in two parts. Uh, but it is. This is a beautiful account of Marilyn's life. Um, 